I have to say, it's quite disconcerting speaking from this side of the church, it really is. I'm so used to uh, being over there, but as you know, if I was to be over there, you'd only see the top of my head probably, so. Well, we're focusing on prayer and presence this evening, as I've said. And as I say these words to us from uh, 2 Samuel 22, I'd like us to keep in mind that phrase, presence. The presence of God. I'll start by saying this. God is present, ABC. Here with us now. I'll say it again. God is present. He's with us here now. Amen. I think sometimes we need to say these things as a statement of our faith and belief. And he is near He is with us, and he is very close to those of us here who are people of faith. I'm not going to go through every single verse in this psalm, which is probably, uh, sorry, this psalm psalm in in 2 Samuel 22. The reason I say I've got the word psalm in my head, you know why, I'll tell you why. Does anybody ever read these words elsewhere in the Bible? Yeah, Psalm 18. Word for word, pretty much, this is Psalm 18. So there you are. It's good to know that God saw these words as so anointed. He's put them in two passages in the Bible, so that's nice. But I'm going to mention particularly verses 2, part B, really, to 3, and I want to emphasise some particular things this evening. First things first. Rock is mentioned, and actually the word rock is mentioned twice in those two verses. Fortress is there, deliverer, refuge. Refuge is actually mentioned twice as well. Shield, salvation, horn, str- str- horn of our sorry, stronghold, and saviour. And what is so special about each of those words is this: the word "my." It's repeatedly "my fortress," "my refuge," "my horn," "my saviour." You see what I'm saying? It's deliberately first-person language. So God in his being is present with us now. And he is your rock. He's your fortress. He's my refuge, my shield, our stronghold together. He is our saviour. This is who he is. Now let's just stop for a moment and think about that list. My refuge my saviour, horn, stronghold. These are incredible words of the God who is present, God who is our God. And what is so striking about this is that none of these things we seek, like knowing God in this way, are found in religion, They're not found in going in on ourselves. They're found in him. Always in him. I think sometimes people can look at the Old Testament and find it a little bit impersonal in a way because God's very kind of powerful and authoritative and he's strong and he's involved with battles. And yes, he's the same God of the old as he is in the new. But there's language in here that's precious. My God, my stronghold, my rock, my fortress... And I think, really, the Old Testament, particularly with all its religious things that it was involved with, is not for the sake of those things, but to bring people into a relationship with God and for us to really be in awe of him and who he is. I want to go through these words here, rock and various others, and I'll tell you why, because actually when you look a little bit more into, say, that the Hebrew background, there's some interesting things that come out to it. So I hope that's okay with you, because I think it will do us good just to look at these words. The word rock has its root in the idea of loftiness. So this refers to a God as a rock, a being who is high, lofty, and lifted up. He is the one who is mountainous in his greatness, which we cannot begin to even measure. That's what the word rock really has. And please note that the word rock 
is used alongside the word Lord in capital letters. Whenever you see the word Lord in capital letters in the Old Testament, the word behind it is Yahweh, a word we know so regularly. Yahweh means I am who I am and I will be who I will be. So this rock is the God who says I am your rock. I will always be your rock. I am it now and will always forever be your rock. And please note the word rock is also used alongside the word God in verse 3a. So God, who is the supreme being, who is also Yahweh, is your rock, my rock, your lofty, my lofty, immeasurably massive, mountainous like God. It's good to know, isn't it? And who's our rock in the New Testament? Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. I guess you could say all these words relate to Jesus one way or another. The word shield. Well, the word for shield also means protector. And here's something a little bit strange. The word used for shield here can also be used for the scaly hide of a crocodile. How about that? It's a bit odd, a bit different. But figuratively then, if I'm going to say the word... God has an impenetrably thick hide, protective shield-like hide for you, for me. That's God, our shield. Fortress. He is also our fortress. And the word here is used for a net as in capturing an animal. And so for me, this conveys the idea of God capturing me into his fortress, castle-like safety of himself and holding me fast. Deliverer. He is the one who literally slips us out from the enemy territory. He is the one who is our escape. I know we say the word deliverer many times as the church, but how much do we really know he is the one who escapes us out from the place of terror, and delivers us unto himself. What do we make of these words? We read them so easily, so quickly, but they are full of wonderful truth for you and me. Refuge. The word refuge literally means retreat, and it's to do with fleeing away from a situation and retreating into God, who is our refuge and our security. Horn of salvation. Now, has anybody ever seen one of those BBC documentaries where on a mountaintop somewhere with a sort of shadow and silhouette, there's two bisons banging their heads together with their horns? Anyone ever seen that kind of thing? Well, horns, obviously, are potent images. Really, they are. You know, I wouldn't want to be banging my head against one of those things. I really wouldn't. So they represent potency, power, strength and defence. So that's what we've got to have in mind when we think of the word horn. But here's something else. On the Old Testament altar, there were horns. Not in the shape of horns, horns, but they were actual horns, and they were dabbed with blood. Thus, the horns of the altar are all to do with the power of God's salvation. Isn't that a wonderful thing? The power of God's salvation. Hence the phrase, horn of my salvation. Jesus, in Luke 1, 69, is the horn of our salvation. Therefore, may I say, however strong our spiritual foe might be, the horn of our salvation, Jesus Christ, is always stronger still. He is our defence, he is our power and our strength. And believe me, he can smash into the enemy just as hard as he likes, and will always win. Praise be to his name. Stronghold. Now, I like the word stronghold for one particular reason. Most of our translations have here the word stronghold, but the good old King James Version, do you know what it's got? High tower. Okay, And I think it's quite rare for it to be translated as high tower, but it's certainly the King James. And do you know what? I have stood, I'm very blessed to have done this, I went to America many years ago and I stood at the bottom of El Capitan in Yosemite. I always want to say Yosemite, but you know what I mean. And this mountain, this granite-like mountain, 
going right up and there's these people, mad, climbing it, getting up to the top. Incredible. And when we look at the word stronghold, it literally has in mind the idea of a high tower, something placed on a cliff top, something on a mountain top, right, right up. So I guess if you're placed up like that, you're being held strongly, hence why we get stronghold. And in ancient times, of course, to place a castle or something like that on top of a mountain, well, you know as well as I do, that's a very impenetrable place. So this word is all to do with altitude, believe it or not, about an inaccessible place far, far up. God is our high tower. God is our stronghold, our refuge and protection. And saviour and salvation, they link together, as of course you'd expect. What an amazing word. At its most basic meaning, saviour or salvation really means openness, wideness and freedom. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ, our saviour, does for us. He brings us out of the prison place into the wide open freeness of himself. That's what he does and we are placed into the arms and safety of God the Son. So, I've said ABC, God is present with us. But just think for a minute. My rock, my fortress, my high tower. I hope by describing these things the way I have, it's broadened out the sheer graphic detail of what God is saying to us now. And so I want to say these words. We call to him today, for he is our Lord. We call to him because he is worthy of our praise, verse 4. We call out to him because our God will hear us, just like he heard David, and the sound of our voices will go into his ears because he sits in his temple and he is on a throne. I think one of the big critical things that the church so desperately needs is to not really to think in terms of God's presence as a concept, but as not so much a theory, but a reality. I really do. We talk about God being present But do we really know him present as the rock, as the fortress, as our saviour, etc.? So I want to prophetically read out the next set of verses from this psalm to you. And I want to read it in such a way that I hope that as I do, you will begin to sense increasingly the presence of God. And so ABC, here it is. The earth is trembling and quaking. Smoke is rising from his nostrils. Fire is coming forth from his mouth. Burning coals are blazing within it. And he is parting the heavens. And he is coming down right here. Verse 9 and 10. He is coming down and he's making himself known. He is flying on the cherubim, soaring on the wings of the wind. Darkness is his canopy around him. And his presence, there's our word again, is blazing with brightness, with lightning bolts emanating forth. He can do this in our midst tonight. Hallelujah. And he's reaching down from on high, taking hold of you as you are. He is drawing you out of deep waters, picking you up, and he is thundering against those waters with his resounding voice this is the presence of God ABC be still and know this is who he really is and God wants to verse 20 bring us out into a spacious place broad enlarged a place of liberty a place of freedom which is what salvation is all about we have it in Jesus of course we do But I believe that the Lord may well want to touch us where we are tonight. Perhaps there's something on your mind, something going on in your life. But I believe God wants us to experience something of 
his spacious liberty and his freedom. So let us not know just the term, his presence, not just the theory of it, but by faith tonight to reach out to him wherever we are. So, as the psalmists often say, that little word, selah, selah, ponder on these things for a few moments because then perhaps we can just pray for a short while. Let's have a moment of quiet, shall we?